The white cliffs of Dover. The year was 1942, and it was an ordinary brownstone inhabited by seemingly ordinary people, but the devil was in the details. In the wee hours of the morning on the 2nd of July, a dead body was discovered by the superintendent of the brownstones on Davewood Avenue. At first glance, the man appeared to be a cat burglar who had fallen from the top of the roof to his death, but the autopsy revealed foul play. Why had this man died? Did the seemingly innocuous residents of the brownstones have a clue? The brownstones on Dave Wood Avenue were built in the 1850s, during the Gilded Age of American architecture. As time passed, the elegant homes were split into apartments and saw many different occupants. In 1942, America was engaged in World War II and its citizens were often overwhelmed with a mixture of patriotism, suspicion, pride, and fear. During the summer of this year, the brownstones were occupied by about 13 people. These folks came from different places and had very different backgrounds. Most of them knew each other fairly well. At least they thought they did. Angus McDoodle was born in Scotland and was a very well-known artist. He had lived in uh, California for many years before moving to the Brownstones. Bridget Donahue and Catherine O'Meara came from Ireland as young girls in the 1800s. After their husbands died, they pooled their money and decided to live in the Brownstones. Mr. Robin Thrasher Bird Esquire was a noted Egyptian archeologist. He met his wife, Daisy Plowright Bird, when she went to Nairobi as a young girl to seek her fortune. They kept a companion, a chimpanzee, that they named Ape Bonsido. Ape, which stands for African Primate Evaluation, appears to be able to communicate with humans and enjoys dressing up and visiting the other residents. Michael Workless worked for the WPA in the 1930s. At the time of the murder, he was the maintenance man and caretaker at the Brownstones on Dave Wood Avenue. Most of the tenants have a low opinion of him. Willie Smith was an itinerant violin player who made his money performing on the streets. He also came from Ireland and was always sure to have an Irish tune whenever the Irish sisters passed by on the sidewalk. He doesn't live at the Brownstones, but he seems to spend most of his time there. Lucelena Del Rey, despite her Spanish accent, claimed to be an American. She was a cabaret singer and worked every night and always was well-dressed in furs and jewels. The residents noted, however, that she frequently had male visitors. Oriana von Strutheyer came from a very wealthy family in Rhode Island. She lived in the largest and most expensive apartment in the Brownstones, and the neighbors considered her quite snobbish. John and Lily Woods met on the beach in California. He was in construction work, and she was an interior decorator. They moved to the Brownstones, which are owned by their son-in-law, after the war started because the construction business wasn't doing well. Randolph and Andy Crookman didn't live at the Brownstones, but they were the Woods' grandchildren, and they often spent a lot of time there. Randolph was a recent graduate, and he was employed at the defense factory owned by his father. He had taken a shining to Luth Elena and often was there taking care of her dog. Andy was a good kid, and he liked to spend a lot of time playing with Ape, the chimpanzee. Helen Bailey was young and sweet. Her father was a career army officer, and she grew up traveling the world. She married her high school sweetheart, Ben, before he shipped off for war. She worked at the defense factory, which is owned by Mr. Crookman, the owner of the Brownstones. She was fascinated by travel. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death was a very succinct puncture wound created by a sharp object on the back of the man's neck none of the residents admitted to knowing this man. As the investigation unfolded, bitter rivalries, grudges, and biases were revealed among the tenants. Did they have merit, 
or are they just a sort of gossipy speculation that arises in close quarters? After the murder, the residents began to become suspicious of each other. A number of snide comments and finger pointing was observed during the investigation. An interrogation of the residents revealed that many of them were missing objects, sharp objects. One resident heard the elevator run late that night. Some of the residents theorized it was a burglar after the riches of the fourth floor snobs. Others had suspicions about the shiftless caretaker. Nothing was conclusive. The case was abruptly closed by the chief of police and the man's death deemed an accident, despite the evidence to suggest otherwise. Why was this man murdered? Was it at the hands of a Davewood Avenue resident? And what was their motivation? This crime remains unsolved. Cast your vote and submit your theory on who the murderer was. Visit theminitimemachine.org slash Rockstone.